Hey everybody, Techie Prepper here. Um, and today we're going to go over uh, how to make a alcohol stove out of a Bud Light bottle. So this is going to probably cover two different videos. There are a lot of steps involved. It's not incredibly complicated, but it does require a couple of tools here and there. Um, it's not quite as easy as a soda can stove in that you can't just do it with a pair of scissors. <clears throat> so first of all, um, I made a few of these and I found what measurements work for me. Uh, and what works the best for me is two inches up from the bottom. So I make a mark there. Uh, right at the shoulder here. Um, and that's about three inches from the top and then 1.5 inches from that mark I do another one um, so you can see the marks there if you're going to use a hacksaw to cut this you're going to want to have a mark all the way around so you can go through scoring it with the hacksaw the whole way through before you actually slice through if you slice through right away you're going to end up with a really bad cut um, a bandsaw is ideal for this. If you don't have a bandsaw, um, I use a metal chop saw. And that ends you up with cuts that look much like this. So you see the enormous burrs that are left all around it, right? And so all of those are going to have to get cut off. But from the marks that I showed you earlier, let me get the template out of the way here. We want to end up with these two pieces. These are two from two separate bottles. And in the end, they're going to nest like this. This one is going to get shoved down deep inside there. And it'll end up looking like this. So that you have the inner cone that comes from the neck of the bottle. All the way down inside with some little weep holes that allow the alcohol when it's poured into the center to enter the double wall uh, container here um, and then you come out with your holes of course your jets uh, I prefer 19 that are a 1 16th inch diameter uh, I've done a lot of testing and that seems to be the best and then I use a roll crimp around the top and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later on in the video but first of all we marked our can and through the magic of TV here are the pieces well they're really not the pieces but anyway the next step is going to be to trim off the burrs sand everything down and get ready to go I've already trimmed the burrs on this piece by cutting around and all I'm using is a dull blade um, you could use a sharp wind but I don't like to waste decent blades to do this so your goal is to just remove the big pieces so that you can sand it a whole lot quicker. Uh, working with this stuff, it's really easy to slice yourself. So I like to use a glove um, so that I know that I'm not going to twist the aluminum in my hand just a tiny bit and end up with a cut. You can see everything here that's coming off. Now, part of the design of these alcohol stoves actually does rely on having uh, the, the proper dimensions. So first of all, this top rim here has to marry up to the can quite well. If air is coming out there under pressure, then your design isn't going to work right well. Um, you're going to see jets coming out in places that you don't expect to have them. So it is key to be able to do this to a, a decent degree. Spend your time is what I'm saying. <laughs> Just make sure you're kind of doing a good job at sanding all of this down. Well, first slicing away and then sanding so that your stove performs as efficiently as possible. 
So next, what I'm going to do is take out a piece of sandpaper. And once we brush away all the little aluminum shavings here, get them off my hand. We're just going to do some sanding. Uh, this is a 150 grit. And it'll allow you to clean up those edges. Again, so that it mates very well with that other piece. You're also going to want to clean up the inside edges. So once you sand it that way in order to get everything even, you go back through and sand on the inside. Okay, so we're still working on this piece. I'm just going to make it nice and flat, nice and sanded down. We already trimmed it off with a knife. And then the next step, once I'm done with this, which we'll probably skip to right now, is to drill the jets. Okay guys, so the next step is to drill the holes. Um, like I said earlier, I like 19 jets. That seems to be a really efficient way of running the stove without having, without having it be too hot. Um, so that's what I have set up here. Uh, I made a little jig on my drill, pre drill press. So basically, I just drill a hole move it till where it lines up to my little pointer here and then make another hole. And there you go. You got your holes all drilled. And our next step is going to be to ream all of these. So basically, if you don't have an even flow out of that jet, it's not going to perform optimally. So all these burrs on the inside, I don't know if you can see this here. But all I'm doing is uh, running a countersink on the inside of each of these 19 holes. You can just hand twist it, you know, the aluminum is so soft that it'll just do it on its own. So once you've done all 19 on the inside, go ahead and run them through on the outside. A little easier to see here probably. Okay guys, the next step is to drill or <laughs> indent the weep holes and that's where the gas is going to travel from the inner core into the double wall here. So I like to use a Dremel cutoff wheel and we're just going to put in four. So we got four different holes there. That's all there is to that step. Next up, our job is to fit this right on in there. And if you've done everything right, 
it should sit nice and flush down in the bottom and you should have about a quarter inch lip up here and that's going to allow for your roll crimp now in order to do the roll crimp uh, pardon all the reloading equipment you can see what my top priority is okay so our next step I've made this slippery little guy uh, this is the bottom of one of the cans just like this is and what I did is I stretched it out by shoving the bottom of a full beer can in there so now that's wide enough to go around the can so what I'm gonna do uh, looks like there's a little stuff inside here just gonna go ahead and wipe that out make sure it's nice and clean and spray a little silicone in so what that'll do is just make it nice and easy to have this whole thing slide through bend and uh, come off again so you can see how that works right I'm gonna open up the vise take two pieces of wood and that's just to distribute the load around slide our stove in the middle and you want to make sure that everything's lined up well and once that is you go ahead and start crushing and you can see it's especially nice on these limited edition Super Bowl bottles you can actually watch the cup go in there and monitor your quarter of an inch because that's the amount that you left just for crimping now sometimes they don't come out completely perfect and level so I like to go back in just even up anything that's a little bit off Mm, that looks darn good. Okay. Yep, nice and flat on the top. So, our next and final step in creating this is to go ahead and make the uh, indentations on the top, I guess you would call them. And basically what that is, is I'm taking a little jeweler's file here and making some holes or some grooves. And the reason for that is that if you have a particularly cold set of water that you put on top of here and you didn't have these little equalization grooves for air to come in you actually extinguish the fire that's inside of here it actually took me a long time to figure this out um, this is something that a lot of people don't want to tell you about because you know they're making stoves commercially and this is kind of a, a trade secret but uh, it's the thing that really makes the difference. If you're down in Florida all the time and you're never going to be in cold weather, you would never notice the difference, but certainly in the weather that I work in, that makes a huge difference. And there you go. You've got a completed Bud Light alcohol stove ready to go.